Hello and welcome once again. So as you can see, this is a really cute mouse sitting in a shoe. So um, I'm a traditional artist and I do children's books as well. And I do watercolor and acrylic paintings. So I like sketching out new designs. So this is the design I sketched out. And I'm going to start with the shoe. And we are going to make the shoe out of polymer clay. Please don't mind my cat. Cats are really nosy. So I'm starting off with foil because it saves a bit of clay. And this is the first time I'm making it. So let's see how it goes. I'm sharing all my projects with you. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm self-taught. So every project is new and it's an experiment and i film everything so you can see all the mistakes i make and how do i correct them so i don't leave any bits off and you can see all the things i do right and all the things i do wrong and then i make them right so that makes it the learning process a bit more interesting because some of the videos they show making cool stuff and when you start doing it you realize it's not that easy so I'm going to show you all the bits I just shaped the shoe according to my uh, sketch and I had a reference picture as well you know, it was a sketch of a shoe so this is the opening and I'm covering it with thin layer of uh, clay so I am a bit stingy on the polymer clay because it's it's kind of expensive and you don't need much because you've got the base of the foil I don't want it to be really extra heavy and foil is makes it lighter as well so the shoe seems like a baby shoe so I'm adding more foil to the front part. I'm covering it. And this is the middle. I don't know what you call it, but it's that flap that goes in the middle. And the opening. As you can see, I'm just shaping everything with my fingers. So polymer clay is really easy to handle. It's just like Play-Doh. And I'm adding thin layers on the inside now. And a strip at the bottom. So I made a thin strip that's going to be like near the base. See, it still needs more on the toe side. So it doesn't have to be really neat, like it can have an old look, kind of worn out look. This seemed like really a baby shoe so i'm adding more foil to the rim to make it look like a boot rather than a baby's shoe so as you can see it's trial and error and i'm showing you all the process that i did and i undid <laughs> undo <laughs> uh, so i had to take some off so, like uh, the wool, even clay is forgiving. So you can keep shaping it and reshaping it until you're happy. So here I'm using different tools to make it smooth and really press the inside. Covering all the foil and smoothing out all the joints that I had made. Now for the lace, I'm just rolling out some clay. 
you know, sorry for the base, not the lace. And this is going to show the part of the sole that's attached to the shoe. Smoothing it out with my tools. Now it has taken shape and looks much better now. Now I'm going to add the details. So making little holes on each side where the laces are going to be dashed and really thin piece that I've rolled in my hand in my fingers and attaching that so it looks like a shoelace and you can add more details if you want so these are the tiny details that make all the difference Just making it going across each hole in the extra bits. Here I'm carving out the patch that I'd put on the heel and just shaping it. Making it rounder on the edges. And then smoothing it out. Here I'm going to give it tiny markings of uh, the, the stitchings that some shoes have. I'm covering all the foil from the inside and pressing it down so it's nice and smooth so here it is it did take a while to do this but I think the results are worth it. So now I'm going to measure how big I want the mouse to be. And I'm going to start felting the mouse. And so I don't want it to be too big. The body is going to be hidden inside. So only the head is going to stick out. But still you need to have a body that goes in. I'm just making a cylindrical shape and then I'm going to attach a head to it and even that shouldn't be too big so you have to keep your shoe and keep measuring and by the way after I done the shoe I baked it in the oven and now it's, it's solid now it's not squishy anymore So for the head of the mouse, I've rolled some wool and I'm going to shape it. You can have a reference picture in front of you. And shape it accordingly. Because the mice have a really pointy face. So it's uh, easier to do when you just shape it soon as you start making it so the base is shaped right then it's easier to build on that so i'm attaching the body to it and then i'm going to further do the shaping so this is going to be the pointy part 
in the nose, in the mouth. You know, so I'm shaping it with my needle. And it's still really squishy, so I'm just gonna go on felting it until it's nice and firm. So now you can see it sits really well inside and I have to still make the face a bit more pointy. So I'm going to keep felting it into shape and as it was still squishy it is getting into shape. Usually when I make my mice I start with a really pointy thing like something to wrap all around so it gives you a point like a skewer I use a skewer but this time I just completely forgot making the markings where I have to put the eyes in so just making holes so the uh, the eye the eyes that I attach are gonna sit inside so these are just indentations As you can see the body still feels a bit squishy but I'm going to keep felting it until it's nice and firm. So on videos it seems like it hasn't taken much time but every piece takes a lot of time. So I have to make sure the eyes are symmetrical know where the nose and mouth are gonna be so I'm making it trying to make it nice and firm Now I'm attaching more wool to the cheeks so the nose part looks more pointy when it has chubby cheeks. little more wool on the forehead just uh, till where the nose begins the muzzle begins now i got these glass eyes uh, off the internet and i'm thinking i should use them they're colorful so we're using the yellow ones so these i just have to stick on they don't have to go in they don't have a pin at the end of them. I'm going to add color. And I wanted a gray mouse, so I'm just adding a little darker color to the nose and the muzzle. And then I'm going to continue with the gray. But the yellow eyes looked really creepy <laughs> so I didn't like it although I had felt it around the edges tried to make them look nicer but I think the black eyes look make it look cuter so I'm just removing them I'm going to make a hole yeah brutal and I'm going to stick in the plain black eyes they make the mouse look a lot more innocent because the yellow eyes made it look really creepy and more like a dragon. So now he looks cute. Now he's going to have a pink nose which I am going to shape right onto the face. 
So I just take a bit of pink wool and I'm going to shape it right where it has to be. Now more color to the muzzle. Felting a tiny piece of grey wool and this is going to be the mouth, the lower lips you can say. So I'm attaching it right underneath the muzzle. So now my mouse has a little mouth. Now the tiny little feet, oh sorry, fingers. And got some wool and I haven't done this on time lapse so I'm just rolling it on my skewer you can use a toothpick it's better to use a toothpick but I was just too lazy to get up and get one so I'm using my skewer instead so I just rolled it twice on a skewer but you can roll it more times on on a toothpick and I'm going to felt it so it's a really tiny piece of wool and once you've got the shape of one finger, you can turn it round, felt it some more. And you can make another finger on the other end of it. So you get two fingers in one go, and then fingers or toes, I think. They're fingers because I'm making tiny hands. So the other edge I'm going to roll again from the other end roll it over on the inside and then I'm going to felt it and uh, now you can have two fingers in one go and you can make another one and attach it so you get three little fingers or so if you want four you can make another one just like this Dash them together. So as it is really tiny, you have to be really careful and try not to lose the shape. Make it a bit firmer. Felt it all around. As you can see him shaping it and making that little tiny fingers nice and rounded don't want to lose the shape So if you want four fingers you can attach them together but i think i want three so i'm taking really small shred of wool i'm going to make another one just one just roll it on a skewer or a toothpick and felt it step it down Once you've made another one, you can attach them together from the bottom so you get the rounded edges of the fingers intact and the bottom part can form a little tiny hand. 
you can add more wool if you want to the bottom like roll it into the all, all the fingers in a little piece of wool and that makes a tiny hand i've shown that in my uh, guinea pig videos in more detail if you want to see that i'm just curling them up a bit because they are going to be out sticking out edge of the shoe like he's sticking his hands out so I'm stabbing right in the middle so the fingers are a bit curled Just folding them over and felting them that gives the shape that I want so now it is a bit rounded I'm going to attach it right underneath its head because we're not going to give many more details to the body just the hands sticking out and the head sticking out so just placed it with a pen I'm going to make the next one I've done uh, one ear and I'm making just a round shape with the gravel and I think my camera has moved and can't show you that very clearly but it's just a round shape and once you've made one you can put it on top of the piece of wool with which you want to make the other one and shape it and so I did both with a little pink wool in the middle and then I ironed them out with my hair straightener and now I'm going to attach them to the head so it's always better and another thing is these eyelids I just felted a, a really small piece of wool and placed it on top of the eyes and here the hands are attached and the ears are attached and it's always better to iron the, out the ears of rabbits and mice with the hair straightener they work really well so i made them a bit thicker so i'm painting my shoe with uh, some acrylic paint and uh, this is my really messy studio so i'm just going to show you how i'm going to do it not going to show you the whole process but <laughs> just showing that I've just painted it with acrylic paints so as I do uh, painting on canvases I've got all the colors so this is the shoe all painted and the mouse sits perfectly inside and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and gonna make your own do subscribe and like and share and thank you very much for watching it's available on my etsy store if you want to buy it thank you